Hey there, I'm Dave Carger. Welcome back to the Entertainment Weekly and People Video Studio at the Toronto International Film Festival 2022. I'm so happy to be here with the crew from the fascinating movie Nanny, the writer and director Nikiatu Jusu, and cast members Anna Jope, Michelle Monaghan, and Cinqua Walls. Great to see you all, and congratulations on this movie, which is absolutely riveting. I really loved it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. This movie has already won the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival. Well done. Thank you. But that was virtual, so you all didn't get to celebrate. How did you celebrate that night when you found out that it had won? You know what? I, I still don't think I've celebrated. I think this yeah. is the beginning of celebrating because, I mean, with the pandemic, we've all kind of been in isolation in different ways. And so this is the first time we're all in a space physically together to actually celebrate. Have you seen it, Anna, with an audience yet? I did. I was able to make it to New York for the New York Directors. Oh, New, new Directors. New I'm so yeah. sorry. New Directors, New Film. Um, and it was a small audience and, you know, cinephiles, which are mm -hmm. the best. Um, and, and so that was the first time I was able to see it with an audience, which was great. Uh, Nikki Abdu, it's a very fascinating film because on one hand, it's this domestic story of a nanny, a Senegalese American, or Senegalese, mm -hmm. um, you're Senegalese American, the character is Senegalese, mm -hmm. nanny who's working for a well-to-do couple in New York City uh, while trying to get her own son to move to the States, but then it also has what can really be described as kind of horror elements to it as well. What made you want to combine those two aspects into this film? I was thinking a, a way into guiding audiences to care about worlds and characters they traditionally, and this is all like generalizing, but traditionally characters who haven't been centered in cinema um, a great way to create an empathy machine, I think, is through genre. It's through the darker genres of horror, thriller, et cetera. Um, you kind of essentially are tricking people into caring about people they typically would not care about. Well, you certainly do, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Michelle, your character could easily have been just a straightforward villain mm -hmm. in this movie, right? The rich white lady who hires the nanny. Mm -hmm. But there's so many more shadings to it than that. What was important for you to bring across in her? Well, I think um, for me, and this was kind of on the outset when we spoke um, initially, uh, was to really just humanize her, right? Amy is a character, uh, but she's someone that we all know, right? And she has so many very, she has so many layers. Uh, and what I really wanted to do is, is to really humanize her, not in the traditional empathetic sense, but with the hope that audiences um, would look at her with an introspective lens and perhaps see facets of themselves mm -hmm. and in her perhaps maybe recognize their own um, biases, um, judgments, and, uh, and so, you know, we spoke at length, Nikiatu and I, and um, I, I, think we, I think we accomplished that, and it was something that we really tackled in the rehearsal process as well uh, in the room to make sure that we were really servicing the intention of, of Nikiatu's writing. Mm. Cinque, your character is fascinating. He's a doorman who works in the building where Michelle's character lives and Anna's character works. And you meet him, and then you realize that he's kind of going to try to insert himself into uh, Aisha's life, because he has a little crush, okay. why not? Can't blame him. <laughs> cannot blame him, one bit. But as you get to know him, at first you're like, is he a bit of a player, what's going on? But then you also really gave him complexity too. How did you want to surprise people with this? Much like myself. Oh. No. <laughs> no, honestly, I think similarly to all of us, it, it really started with a conversation with Nikiatu, And I was really fortunate that I've said this many times, as a filmmaker, she gives you so much information, um, so much subtext for you to color. And we talked about just the, the idea of a black man doing what he has to do. In the movie, you discover that he has a son that he takes care of, a grandmother that he takes care of, then he, he develops an affinity and a love um, for Aisha, and he wants to kind of impart that on in that direction as well. And it was so important to Nikiatu to, to make sure that that was shown with a level of, of regalia, I feel like, to, to make sure that he was strong, he was powerful. And I think for all of us that have had an opportunity to live in New York, the doormen are our favorite people because we learn so much about them. We learn that they've, you know, 
led many lives. So it's not surprising that he was a Swiss Army knife to me. But that really was because of the character that she had wrote on the page that I was able to step into. Anna, you're so believable as Aisha. I, was ju I just fell right into this performance. What was your way into her, to relate to her? Oof. I've just, I've known Aisha my whole life because she's, um, she's my mother and she's, my mother was a domestic worker and an immigrant. I'm an immigrant. I moved to the States when I was five years old. And um, so I understand um, the experience of assimilation, the experience of survival in a place that's not your own, um, in a place that's completely foreign. I understand what it means to be alien. Um, and Aisha is those things and she's navigating um, a foreign space. Um, and to add to that, she has a son and she has this one specific goal to bring her son to New York to build a new life. And um, that's exactly my mother's story. Mm. She brought us to the States when I was five. And um, so I just know her intimately in my cells because it's who and what I come from and it's what raised me and grew me. Um, and I've also known immigrant women my whole life, immigrant families um, growing up in Houston. My neighbors were Nigerian immigrants and um, my best friend growing up, April, her mother was also a domestic worker. And so I just know this life. <laughs> Nick Yatu, given the intensity of the film, also the fact that you have a very young actress, Rose, who plays Rose, <laughs> um, what kind of atmosphere did you want to foster on the set, on the days where she was there and on the days when she wasn't. Did you want levity or were you trying to set a very serious tone? You know what, that's a good question. And shout out to Rose and shout out to shout out uh, Lamine, our Lamine character, Jaleel. Yes. Um, we had a lot of kids on set and we had a lot of kids under 10 and I always joke that never again will I do this to myself um, <laughs> on a small indie film. but. It is important when you have children and when you have young PAs who are aspiring filmmakers, because I'm also an educator, so I also see my film students in some of the crew. And mm -hmm. it's important for me to have the safest set that I can have across the board. Um, and it's hard because you know a lot of sets in this industry can be really toxic, um, which is par for the course. And so you, you hope that you're assembling department heads, and I had amazing department heads, Rena Yang, Jonathan Guggenheim, who did our, our production design, Charlize Antoinette, who did our costume, et cetera, et cetera. I chose leaders who I trusted in each department, and so we just had like a really healthy set, as, mu as healthy as a set can be, because mm -hmm. you can't micromanage every facet, and you can't micromanage when you have a tier one shoot in New York City at the peak of the pandemic and you have g &E who are rotating in for three days here and three days there, um, you can only oversee so much. But overall, I think we had a really healthy environment. Michelle, it's fascinating because this movie is in large part about people who aren't raising their own kids, mm -hmm. right? Your character's not raising, not really raising her own kid because she's off doing her career thing. Anna, your character is having to raise someone else's kid. Sinkle, you're the only one who's basically like raising his or her own. That was Nikki Yatu. That was really, <laughs> that, I'm gonna be honest, like that was, we, I mean, that, maybe that's a discovery that we're articulating now, yeah. mm -hmm. but I think the idea, and she spoke so, so much to me about her own father. So I think the idea of, of a man who's there and is showing up and then also can see the love and the determination that even Aisha has, that's Nikki Yatu. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you to explore this idea of not raising your own child? Well, it was it was really actually profound. There was a, a line that you wrote actually in your in your lookbook, I think it was in your director's statement, which is, and I can't remember it verbatim, but it was about um, uh, nannies that are servicing the upward mobility of white women, mm. and that line struck me, mm -hmm. and it and it's very true, and it really sparked a conversation between Nick Yatu and I about um, the intersection of womanhood and motherhood mm -hmm. under mm -hmm. patriarchal system. Mm -hmm. and, and I like that our dynamic in the relationship, Amy and um, Aisha's uh, relationship, is that they both really need each other mm -hmm. um, in order to survive and to maintain. Obviously, one sacrifices are much greater. 
Um, but I thought this was like one of the very reasons that I, I so responded to your writing, and mm -hmm. as we all did, and as everybody will to the film, is that it's so layered and there's so much that's culturally relevant right now in terms of, um, of what you're talking about in terms of motherhood and immobility and like. You know. Anna, yeah. Let me finish with one last question for you because I think people are going to be really intrigued by the kind of horror, African folklore aspects of this film. And a lot of that involves your character. Did you shoot all of the kind of genre scenes, if you will, in one week or were they interspersed throughout the shoot? <laughs> <laughs> they were interspersed throughout the shoot. We did film all of the, um, all of the scenes that happened in Amy's home in, what was it, a week? Nine days, seven, eight, nine days. Um, and so all of the horror that happens to Aisha in that space, we filmed um, in a matter of like a day and a half. Or, and so that was intense because that was the first chunk of filming that we did. Oh. And so I had to find <laughs> that, I had to find that um, quicker, you know, pretty quickly. You found it. Well, it's, thank you. Thank it's wild, guys. It's really, really fascinating. I congratulate you on the movie. It's called Nanny. It's coming out in November in theaters and December on Prime Video. Yes, yes. correct. So you have to wait a little bit, but it's good. <laughs> thank you. and Anna and Michelle and Cinqua. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you so, so much. Thank you. thank you. We'll have more coverage from the Toronto International Film Festival all weekend long. See you soon.